Our goal is to help people better grasp God's Word, better apply it in their lives, and I don't think that's possible in our modern society without creatives. Oh, hello and welcome to the Church Circle podcast, the podcast that celebrates church creatives. I'm your host, Ruben Rohard, and this is episode eight of season one. And I'm really excited to introduce our guest today. It's Michael Tuszynski, who is the CEO and co-founder of Church Media Squad um, out. And you're based in Utah, right, Michael? Yeah, based out of Utah, just south of Salt Lake City. So just a bit of background, Michael and I have known each other for a, a few years on and off, but actually over the last few months, and we'll get into that a little bit more down the line, but over the last few months, we've really got to know each other quite well um, and worked together and had a, and a bit of a partnership. So it's been really fun to get to know Michael. And you know what we're going to be talking today is, is about business, um, is about uh, kind of growing a successful business. And so I thought, who better to talk about this than Michael, um, because he, as you guys will find out, has done an excellent job in growing Church Media Squad. And um, yeah, it's been it's been a, a joy to be a small part of that. So Michael, before we get started, why don't you just kind of tell us a little about who you are um, and maybe sure. a little bit about your background. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so me as a person, uh, I, I've kind of moved all over the country. I grew up in eastern Pennsylvania as a kid and southeast Kansas as a teenager um and then ended up in colorado for college and then lived in minnesota for a couple of years as a youth pastor slash worship pastor uh, that was my first experience on staff full-time at a church and then um after a few years in minnesota and experiencing the ridiculous cold that is there uh over winter we decided that was enough of that and uh ended up out here in utah uh not just because we wanted to move out west but uh, Utah ended up becoming home because of a big need for evangelicals in our state. Uh, at the time when I moved to Utah, I think the estimate was about 3% evangelical Christians here. Um, and so that's what drew us out here. I ended up being a worship pastor um, initially here, but uh, it was like a $500 a month uh, worship pastor job. So plenty to cover the bills, you know, um, but... <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, anyways, uh, so I had a bunch of odd end jobs. I started doing freelance graphic design a little bit on the side. I'd kind of picked that up while I was in Minnesota. Uh, I worked at four o'clock in the morning at Lowe's uh, doing some stocking of shelves uh, for a long time, did professional window washing, all kinds of odd end jobs. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I don't know if uh, we want to start talking Church Media Squad stuff yet, but that's kind of what led up to squad founding. Yeah, it, I, I mean, before we kind of jump into it, I think it's really interesting. So many entrepreneurs that I know and business leaders have all kind of started in a very obscure way. And it's not just been like this business has been handed to them. It's been a case of you've, you've, you've worked and grafted and you've tried lots of different things. And then you finally found something and built something that that suits you and matches your skill set. So it's really interesting as there's so many creative and so many entrepreneurial people that I know that started in Home Depot or Lowe's. And uh, I don't know if that's maybe the the, uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the proving ground for for, uh, for entrepreneurs. But yeah, it's really cool to hear that. I think that might be encouraging to some people like listening as well. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. That's your, exactly. your yeah. origin story. <laughs> yeah, my origin story i was in ministry but it was so part-time but i'm doing all kinds of random stuff on the side at four o'clock i woke up at like three o'clock in the morning when i worked at lowe's and that that's uh uh something that most people don't need to experience but it was good good kind of uh life experience too yeah it's funny i, I never would have expected to own a business if you had asked me uh 10 years ago i would have laughed at you yeah so and, and it's interesting as well like you know you did what it what it what it was what you needed to do in order to kind of fuel your ministry. Um, and I know there's so many pastors and so many creatives and so many leaders that are going through the same thing where they're, they're using their, their side hustle almost to kind of help support them in their ministry. So it's really encouraging to hear that as well, that, that there is, you know, there is a, there's a time for grafting and there is a time for, for hustling. And, and maybe it feels like there isn't a, <laughs> isn't a way out or maybe it's a struggle, but then there are, 
examples like you where it's like, look, I can support ministry. I can do these things at the same time. I can build a successful business. So yeah, I think, I think it'd be good if we can kind of dive into Church Media Squad, maybe just tell us a little about what it is yeah. for people that don't know and then kind of sure. where, it, where it began. Yeah. Um, well, what we do at the squad essentially is to come alongside churches in their media efforts, um, whether it's graphics or video or uh, social media stuff, we, uh, websites, logos. Um, we come alongside what churches need to be doing in the modern uh, era in communicating well in media. Um, that's what we do. How we got there um, was a long story. So back to kind of that personal story, coming to Utah, doing all those odd end jobs. Um, I was doing freelance graphic design on the side, uh, not well, but I was doing it on the side. And uh, a company had found me that did mobile apps and asked me to join their staff part time as a graphic designer. And I eventually became their creative director uh, for the company, kind of thinking through what, what do apps look like? What should the screens look like? Developing all that fun stuff. And then the freelance stuff was growing outside of the business there. Um, and my then boss at the app company asked me if I'd be willing to bring in my graphic design clients. And at the time I was like, that'd be great. I would never like to run a business ever. Like this is that part stinks. I would rather have someone else do the business side, which is so funny now, kind of <laughs> looking back at that history. Um, and uh, anyways, uh, after a short period of time, it felt like uh, that company was approached by a different company to buy the app portion uh, and they had no desire on the graphic design side. Um, and so I think it was like a two week period where uh, my wife came up with the name Church Media Squad. Uh, it had no real meaning at the time. We just needed a name. Um, and then I threw together a website and a logo. I did the graphic designer sin and rasterized the text. Didn't figure out what the font was that I used for years after that. Nice. Um, we figured out the font when we changed the logo. That's uh, KJ from our staff figured out the the font that I used years later. Anyways, um, and then Church Media Squad came to be out of nothing and necessity almost. Uh, didn't expect to run a business. Didn't uh, have a plan. Or some people ask sometimes, like, "What was your reason? Why? What was the reason why?" It's like, "Oh, I needed, I needed a job." Sure, <laughs> that was the easiest thing to do at that point. Um, but since then. Uh, the squad has morphed into uh, a real passion project for me. Um, the living in Utah, I think really missionally about life generally, because we don't have a lot of Christians here. Growing up in Kansas is very different. The church I grew up in, the next closest church was that close to our church. Literally, there's a few inches between our, our building and the church next door. Uh, here, the city I live in has 45,000 people and not a single evangelical church building uh, in in our uh, uh, city bounds. Anyway, so because I think missionally uh, a lot and from a missions kind of orientation, what we want to try to do is communicate within the cultural uh, mode apparatus that we live in. And here in the West, we communicate primarily through media. That's been a developing thing in how we communicate as a culture. Uh, and so Church Media Squad has essentially become a way in which we help churches communicate to the, or their community, uh, the gospel message, what their church is about, how their church can come alongside them and their, their biggest need hours. Uh, it's going to need to have an element of media communication in order to communicate well. Um, and so one of the things that we, we say, the reason why we exist at Church Media Squad is to make church media better. Um, and what I always mean by that is that we don't want to just make pretty looking graphics or videos or things that really look good. What we want to do is come alongside churches in their goal of spreading a gospel message in their community and right now that is through media so yeah that's really cool do you think that you know there's for a lot of business owners and for a lot of you know freelancers you know that they they get to a point where the they reach their personal capacity what they can achieve on their own whether that's fulfilling client needs running the business so what what if if it was just a case of needing a job what was it that pushed you to expand and grow church media squad instead of it just being a, a freelancer or a, or a kind of personal family business thing 
what pushed you? Is it, was it the mission of making church media better? Like, what, what was that? Yeah, uh, not not really the mission initially is what led to it. It's just that um, we tried to model our unlimited design model. Uh, it hadn't really existed in the church space up until we did it. And it really caught on. Um, and it, that's when it started to dawn on me, like, oh, we could actually help a lot of churches here uh, with this. And so uh, we started to grow to a point where uh, I as a business owner, you get to a level where you need to either recognize I can't do everything. Um, at, well, you're going to recognize that. You'll come to this point where you just realize you cannot do everything. And you have two options there. One option is to just say, I'm going to keep doing everything myself. I don't trust anybody with this. The other option is to say, I need people to come alongside me who are better than me in some ways, uh, who are going to compliment me in other ways. Uh, and that's kind of a decision I made very uh, I think four years ago, three years ago, um, I had Bennett Tobias, who is our COO now, um, move into a, a vice president role. And I kind of handed a lot of the reins to him to say, hey, I can't do this alone and lead this by myself. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of a changing point. And outside of that, developed this whole mantra of make church media better our internal cultural markers and so much more um, after I, I kind of handed those reins off to somebody else. Sure. Yeah, it's, that's really interesting. D did you, you know, in terms of emotions in that, was that was there a, a lot of discomfort, almost like fear in, in making those steps? Because it's one thing to, to support your, your personal family. It's one thing to support those that are around you, but then to then bring other people's livelihoods into the mix. What, what is that? What did that feel like stepping out for the first time? I, uh, I don't think it, it, I noticed the weight of that decision until about two years ago. Oh, I, it really was COVID when I started to realize the weight of having um, other people's livelihoods depend on uh, business thriving. Um, and it it's quite the... I don't think people realize that until they're in a business owner role, uh, how much of a weight it is to ensure that people are being taken care of, that their families are being taken care of, um, that you do have to make payroll every month, uh, that, that people depend on that. Um, uh, it's definitely a, a weighty thing, but also a really good thing. Um, at the same time, it's awesome to see, uh, families kind of transform by just, being on staff uh, with us, having kind of that remote flexibility that we provide with our staff members, um, benefits that they weren't able to get in other job situations. Um, so that's that's the positive side of that too, is kind of providing those um, life-changing opportunities. Okay, let's be real. Managing a church's resources can be tricky, but what if you could have top-notch designs without stretching your budget or even have someone write all of your newsletters and create and schedule all your social posts? That's where Church Media Squad comes in. We help you save time and still look awesome so you can focus more on your people and not your laptop. No, seriously, they help save each of their churches 15 weeks of work every year. Find out more by clicking the links in the episode's description. Now, back to the episode. Yeah, it's cool. It's almost like you can have what it is like you can support ministry and you can do like help the church but at the same time you can you know not that be not let that be at the sacrifice of of someone's family um which i think is really cool yes it's, it's you know i think it's very admirable for you to do that as well because you could just have it as a a family thing and be like this is just for this is just to help my family but you've taken that a step further and you've done something that's risky and there is there is some fear associated associated to that and, and huge risk and responsibility, but at the end of the day, you get to support um, you know dozens of families and if not hundreds of of individual people within that. So yeah, it's it's really cool and I'm just very fascinated by the whole thing, especially as you say you didn't come from a business minded background. You kind of just kind of it's just evolved into something. So what do you what do you associate? especially over the growth curve you guys have had over the last, you know, since COVID, what would, what do you associate the success of Church Media Squad being? Is it is it a specific thing that you've done? Is it a specific thing? That, is it a, a cultural thing within the team? What do you think that is? I, I definitely think it's more of a company-wide cultural thing uh, than me as a person. I, I think I set a precedence to a level, but um, 
in in the creative space a lot of creatives are uh, we really love to make great looking stuff what i've noticed though is most creatives are not the best at like a system creating systems creating processes that create consistency um and for us i think the biggest winning factor for us was that we're not going to just make pretty looking stuff we're going to do it in an efficient way one of our um internal cultural uh, markers we call them squad goals because we like to call everything by a squad name you know uh, keep it consistent but one of our squad goals is constant improvement Uh, and that's one of those things that we've lived out more so than uh, most of our other squad goals i think on a regular basis what can we do today to make us better than we were yesterday Um, I think some people will not live in that kind of mindset, like, hey, this is pretty good, and then they stop improving. Uh, For us, there's never, like, hitting that apex moment. We're always going to have something that we could be working on or making better, Um, and I think that's kind of what led to the the growth that we've had post-COVID, is saying we're going to constantly improve, we're going to make better systems, make this more efficient, make a better experience for our churches, get them stuff in a way that they will love it the first time. Um, I think we have a, last I looked, we have about a 95% approval rating on our first drafts that we send to clients. And that's not because necessarily because we have great designers, because we do have really phenomenal designers. I think the best design team in the church world. Uh, I'm definitely biased there, but it's not just that. It's a lot of the systems that go into giving those designers what they need to do their jobs as creators. Yeah, it's interesting you you break it down like that because as a creative personally, you know the things that that get me kind of fired up uh, is the creative element, is the problem solving, the things that kind of tr- yeah. pull me back and hold and slow me down is all the logistical side of things. So, I'll, you know, the going backwards yeah. and forwards with the client or whether it's kind of like pro- planning my work day or whatever it might be, the emailing, that kind of thing. Yeah. So when you when you build a company and you remove the logistics from the creatives, do you find that they become more creative, even if there are some boundaries around that, particularly working within a business, or or you know, have you seen a have you seen a positive benefit to to just kind of letting creatives just go and be creative and and having other people to manage systems? Yeah, I think so. A, a good chunk of our staff had time as freelancers or they were the they had to come up with the systems for their creative department at their church um and a lot of them have gotten to this level where like they just get to design all day like they don't have to think about getting uh the invoices paid which is what happens in freelancing work uh they don't have to worry about uh, trying to make sure everyone fo- is following their submission process at their church staff because they're not the leader um at the squad as designers all that stuff's taken care of they're they're getting their their salary their payment so they're not worried about that the system is set and solidified by us and uh we force that on our clients to an extent because it helps create that consistency uh but then yeah it allows creatives to just be creative um to focus on the design side to focus on caring for those church staff members that we work with and interact with on a daily basis yeah it's interesting kind of when I kind of got involved a bit more with Church Media Squad through through Pro Church Media, I, I what I didn't realize was there's a lot of people working on just systems within Church Media Squad. So it's not just Michael yeah. Bennett yeah. and all the designers. It's Michael Bennett and a whole structure of people that are there to build systems out so that the designers and the video designers and the web guys and the branding guys, they can all do the things that they're really good at yep. without, and it's it's that efficiency, mm-hmm. right? Like if everything flows and you've got a high flow, yep. then you're you're going to find you're going to be able to serve churches better. Um, yeah, it, it's it's really interesting, especially if you if you translate that into a into a church team as well. Quite often, what happens in churches is that you just have, uh, you know, in, in some of the smaller churches in particular, you literally just have one or two creative people, and they wonder where a lot of their time goes, where a lot of that is just managing systems. And you, yeah. you will see that, that there's yep. like a, such a huge leap as soon as there's a project manager or as soon as there's a creative director or someone that can do a bit more oversight and then you let the creatives get on there is a huge yep. leap in productivity. So yeah, it's it's cool. And I'm, I'm so glad yeah. to see that working its way into the church world. I think it's been a long time coming. Well, and that's kind of... Um 
in the church world side too of what why why it was some people ask sometimes like why would we outsource the creative side of what we do as a church and for me personally having been in ministry and having done that design side work for my church uh it took away my time as a youth pastor to spend time with people um and so one of my goals with uh, what we do for churches is to give back time for people ministry and not kind of this stuff and processes things. Um, churches have ended up using our whole submission process as uh, something they just copy and use internally um, for different processes so that they don't have to come up with systems themselves. And that's been the biggest win for me as uh, this business owner of Church Media Squad is that we're giving church staff members time to be with their people rather than dealing with all of the the stuff that's not unimportant media is important like i was saying earlier but it's not going to be what pastors sign up for i didn't sign up to be a youth pastor to spend my time designing uh slides for sunday yeah. morning i spent uh, signed up for that to be with my youth ministry students so yeah yeah it's cool it's it's, it's funny you, you almost say you're the whole thing of church media is to make church media better, but it actually just makes the whole church better when church media is better. So you could almost shorten that and just say yeah, make it's, church it's better. A little bit here <laughs> to say, yeah, just make it shorter, make church better. Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't quite fit uh, <laughs> the particular vertical sure. that we're trying to hit, but that's ultimately the goal. Like, we're, I hope that most church companies don't exist to just grow. Uh, as a business like that's not why we exist we exist to help the church we're not the church either so we don't want to take away stuff from churches like one of the things from uh we have our communication squad for instance who does uh social media planning and marketing planning and, and copywriting for churches what they don't do and i will never let them do as the ceo as long as i'm ceo is comment and respond to people on social media because that's a ministry area for us as churches so uh you shouldn't be outsourcing uh comment replies outside of your church because that is an actual ministry area for you um and so that's where like we draw the line in the sand like we're going to help with stuff that doesn't have direct people uh, oriented things, but will aid you in that. But if, when it comes to actually interacting with people, that should be you as church staff members. I love that. I didn't know that. So that's cool to hear. So <laughs> well, there you go. So we yeah. kind of, we've talked about kind of all the, the growth that's happening. Um, and it's really, it's, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. And there's also, I imagine there's been a lot of failures at times or, you know, there's been lessons learned at least what would you say is the biggest lesson that you've learned in your career so far? Uh, I think it goes back to um, when when I moved Ben into the role that uh, he was in at that time that led to him being COO. Biggest lesson was that I can't do everything. I'm not an expert in everything uh, and that I need other people that are better than me, even in the things that I'm good at. Uh, that was, I think, the biggest lesson. Like There's, there's a level of bringing people alongside you who are good at the stuff that you know you're bad at. Uh, it's a different mark to say, I'm going to bring people alongside me who are better at the stuff that I am good at. Uh, so systems is a big example of that. I, I'm pretty good at systems, but I can't develop all the systems for the size company that we're at. So we're going to bring in people that are better at creating automations and systems than me to help us grow in that area. Because if it's up to me as an individual, we're going to hit my personal limits versus if we have a team of people who all are experts in different things and might be better experts in certain areas than I can be, then that's going to grow us as a business, as, as an organization much faster than if it just depends on me as the CEO. Yeah. So would you say that the, you know, the biggest step in, in the business growth was just you handing some stuff over? Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. As soon as I started to say, okay, this needs to go here and this needs to go here and this needs to go here. Uh, I started, started, as soon as I started going down that path, it's like, oh, we're growing more. We're growing more. I need to get more off my plate and more off of my plate. Um, that's been, and even now as, uh, we kind of hit this mark of we're, uh, we have around 70 staff members ish right now. Um, as we kind of move 
even into bigger staff member levels, I'm trying to think of what else can I uh, give to people that are going to be better at stuff than me. Um, I think that's a general principle that I, as leader of the company, need to always be thinking through who's a better fit for this role than I am in this particular uh, area. Yeah, I think that's probably a really good um, you know, word for someone listening is that if you're struggling with, with um, just how much you have on your plate right now, if you can just make some time and make some space to help either replicate yourself, whatever that role is, or delegate to, to someone who may be more skilled than you, you know, it, it will be a stretch. You may have to go from 100% to 110% to get that to the, get that to to get that point. But then you'll notice you'll have way more capacity once you, you break past that barrier. So if you are listening and, and um, let us know, S- send us a message on, in- on Instagram if, if that's something that you've gone through as well. And we'd, we'd love, to, love to hear more about that. Speaking of Instagram and the community, um, obviously recently we launched Church Circle uh, platform. And if you want to know more about that, it's a community for church creatives without the ads, without the algorithms. It's a place where we bring all of the, all of the church creatives together into one, into one uh, home. Why join 17 Facebook groups when you can one, join one church circle? So if you want to know more about that specifically, head over to prochurchmedia.com um, and you can find out more information there. But, you know, we're, we're stepping into a new, a new season in 2024 with Pro Church Media. And a lot of that's come off the back of something that happened last year, which was what the Church Media Squad uh, acquired Pro Church Media, which I think has been a great move. And it's been really enjoyable to just see uh, us t- step into a new season. But, you know, there's, there's, I think it's now that we have you, Michael, kind of here with us talking about it. What are you, some of your goals for, for, that, for that whole acquisition and for Pro Church Media in the future? Well, um, with the squad, uh, we're at this like high custom level side thing where when we say we want to make church media better and help as many churches as possible, when you have a high dollar product, that's not totally possible for the smaller churches like the one I attend right now um, of 200 some people. It's hard to help churches at that size with a, a higher product like that. And so acquiring pro church media has given us this new opportunity to serve more churches to serve more creatives with church circle particularly our hope is to take kind of the uh, internal culture and um, constant improvement kind of things we've done internally with our staff and replicate that in the larger church creative community what can we do to help all church creatives to continue to make church media better and not just rely on our own staff, but helping every single creative out there make their church media better because it has that end result of sharing the gospel in a more efficient way in our culture. So that's kind of the the ultimate goal behind Church Circle um, is to come alongside those creatives to help share some of the knowledge that we've gained in serving hundreds of churches and creating, I think we made 40,000 graphics last year in 2023. Uh, We want to take some of the things we've learned and share that with the creative community, bring alongside other creatives that are not even part of the squad and have them share their knowledge and insight as well. Because we also know, just like I can't take the roles over everything going on in a company, we also don't have all knowledge either when it comes to church creativity. So how can we share that? How can we continue to grow? Uh, the entire church creative community to be better at what we do yeah so i think that's that is really kind of our heart is that whatever your entry point whatever size church you are whatever your skill level is there's a place or a a a rung on the ladder for you to step on so we we want to help you guys um you know make your church media better and and hopefully make your your life better as well If, if you can reduce some stress and produce an increased creativity you know, hopefully that makes your life just a little bit easier as well. So if there's anything that we can do as well, you know, to help, so join the church circle community. Um, you can, you can direct message us on Instagram. We can chat, we can answer your questions. I know the church media squad team. I know a lot of them, the designers, there, the creatives there. they are always more than happy to answer questions, to chat things through. Um, you know, and it's no obligation. It's just a case of, we want to help you guys make your church and your life easier. So, yeah, if you guys ever want to chat to us, just just shoot us a message. We're more than happy to talk those things through. So any final thoughts, Michael, um, for listeners? I know we've talked about quite a bit 
um, today. We're kind of reaching the end of our time, but is there anything, you know, to someone that's listening that you want to just give them a little piece of wisdom to take away with them? Um, I think the main thing I want everyone to know that's a creative is that your work is important uh, to the church because of that media shift, that communication shift that I was talking about earlier. Uh, in the past, we've gotten in uh, particularly like Baptistic circles where I, I kind of come from, the focus has all been on uh, word, the written word, uh, the preach word, which is so crucial. But if we look at uh, the Bible, God's word, there's so many visual examples, even in the written word. Jesus uses parables to uh, give lessons. Uh, I just taught through First John in a small group. Uh, John writes a bunch of allegory like light and darkness. He uses high visual things there. Uh, we have that throughout scripture. And so God's own word ties word and imagery together. And I, I think as creatives, it's important for us to come alongside the word that our pastors are doing um, and provide that imagery uh, marriage with the word. We don't want to usurp God's word, but we want to come alongside and help people better grasp uh, what it is that, that uh, the word of God is trying to teach us, um, whether and whatever we're doing, the visuals that go up on Sunday, the stuff that we put out on social media, our goal is to help people better grasp God's word, better apply it in their lives. And I don't think that's possible in our uh, modern society without creatives. So your work is important um, and keep working at it. We want to help you get there. There we go. That was a great piece of insight. That's, that's encouraged me as well. So Michael, if people want to connect with, with you personally, or if they want to know more about Church Media Squad, what's the best way for, for people to get to know who you are and, and what you do? Yeah. Um, well, if you want to see pictures of my cooking, cause that's about all I do on Instagram now is, uh, Insta my Instagram's, uh, church media, Mike. Um, but, uh, from a more serious tone, if you want to reach out to me, my email is michael at churchmediasquad.com. Uh, that goes right to me. I'll be happy to answer questions as best as I can, or at least give you, um, insight into who else could probably answer your question if I'm not the right person. Or I'll be around on Church Circle as I can too. Uh, if you're part of that platform, I'll be able to just even message you directly in those threads. So there we go. So thank you so much, Michael, for joining us today. And um, we'll be back again next week for another episode of the Church Circle podcast where we celebrate church creative. So thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>